Well, good morning, everybody. I had a had a good question come in, so I want to answer it. Uh, Michael asked about how I carve the small pieces, like the tuning pegs and the bridge, and what tools I use for that. Um, the bridge is is pretty simple and straightforward. Um, we can I'll do that at a, at another at another date. But the tuning pegs are a little more complicated, and I'll at least show you guys um, how what that process is like. Basically. You just get a you get a block of wood of some kind, you know, some hardwood. This is a piece of um, some ambrosia maple. Just some old, nice, curly maple. And this is what Robin has made, made this particular stuff that I'm showing you. Uh, but it's the same way that I, I, I would do it. I showed her how, the way I did it. So, um, but you basically get, get a block of wood and make sure the grain is running the lengthwise, you know, it, it won't work if, if the grain of the wood is running crosswise on the across your peg, then it'll shear every time. It'll be a lousy peg, not about every time, but it'll be no good. So make sure you find out, make sure the grain of the wood is going this way. That means that when, when these, this row of, you know, five tuning pegs was sitting in the tree, it was set like this lengthwise, up and down. Anyhow, so I'm taking a little bit of time on that, but that's very important. So cut out a block of wood and get yourself some, you know, you trace it out and then you cut it out however you're going to do it and you just get yourself a block of wood, something like this. This will make about four or five tuning pegs. Figure out the, the width, the thickness that they need to be and then you're going to cut them into a bunch of pieces um, like this into these kind of things. So it's about five of those and what I just showed you, this is a piece of black walnut right here. And I don't know how thick it is, it's, you know, it's a probably needs to be about a half inch thick it looks like. This is just shy of a half inch thick and then however long your tuning peg is going to be. All I did was I took a, a nice large full-size violin peg that I liked and I traced out the outside of it and then I cut that out and we, and we worked from there. That's how I basically made almost everything that I make too. Is how it's how I make this banjo that I make. Uh, like the the length of the neck, you know, from the nut to the pot is the same distance as it is on my other banjos that are sitting over there. I copy something that works. So copy the length, the measurements on a banjo. To when you make your tuning peg, copy the measurement on that peg. When you make a bridge, you know, find a bridge on a banjo you like. And instead of sitting there with a ruler and working out the spacing that you're going to carve your notches and how tall your bridge is going to be, just copy the shape of, of whatever thing you've got. So, so I showed you guys once we, you know, you start out with a block, something like this, and then you go to, you, you, you're cutting these out of this, and you've got one of these. Then you need a special tool. And I found the best one to get is this. I showed you guys this before, but it looks like um, a row of uh, pencil sharpeners. But each of these is a different size from small, medium to bigger. And you can get all different sizes, smaller or bigger than this. This is the standard one for making violin tuning pegs. So this is what you use, and this is the, it's a machine made in Germany, solid, just solid brass block and razor blades, and it is uh, Herdem. Maybe y'all can even read that in there. But that's what it's got a little. The key comes in it. This is a great tool, and you can even slap this in a vise on your on your bench and just whittle away. I just keep it in my hand and work it like that. But this is the best tool. There's another tool out there that's that's made in USA that's uh, a weird mechanical looking thing that you definitely put in a vise and use. I had that too and I don't like that at all. Uh, but maybe that's good for something else. But for what I do, I use just the standard analog, old school German machine. So, you take this and um, you start Start carving your tuning peg down. You see that, how it's... I roughed it out up here, and then this part I've stuck in... into here. And I'm slowly working this down. I don't want to push it, but... slowly work it in there. 
I need to take this out and, uh, and trim some of that because it's getting a little too sharp in there. So that's how you make the tuning pick with that. So once you get, eventually when you get done, you wind up with this. You know, this looks like an actual, like something that you could stick in a banjo or a fiddle and tune. And then it's just a matter of like, how, what do you want this to look like? And, uh, you know, usually this is what I wind up doing is, is wrapping tape around this, wrap some tape around that so I can work on it and it won't get marred up any further. And then carve this down however I want it with whatever tool I'm going to use. Um, okay, so then once you get that done, how do you get it into the peg head of the, of, of the banjo? Well, you need a peg hole reamer. You need this tool. And this is probably also made in like, this is made in USA, thankfully. But this is just a standard peg hole reamer. And it's got some blades along it. They make spiral ones and they make straight edge ones. This one's a straight edge. And when, once you drill out the hole that you want in your peg head, it's just a straight cylindrical hole. You use this and you're slowly twisting and you get that. So I think the taper on this is a three degree taper. And that's the same taper that these are, that these are made to. So this matches this. That's fairly standard, but make sure, you know, they make different angles and stuff. So when you get one of these and you get the set of these, make sure they're both the same taper. Usually I think it's a three degree taper is what they, is what they talk about. That's all you need. These are the only two tools that you need to, that are, that are special tools that I use for making the banjo. Everything else is just a hand drill, hand saws, um, a vise, and C-clamps chisels, files, sandpaper, razor blades to scrape it with. Boom. That's all you need. And a little electric jigsaw is real handy too. Yep. Well, I think that answered your question. And uh, here's another, some in this box, I've also got some tail pieces. Here's some couple of different tail pieces I can show you all that I've got. That'll go on future banjos. Kind of where they look a little bit nicer. That's cool. Kind of neat. All right, guys. So That's an example of some stuff. I don't think I have any bridges in this little box of goodies. I don't. But gives you the idea. Oh, here's um, here's a pattern, a pattern for a tailpiece. This is just a piece of cardboard, and uh, I'll use this over and over to make that make that same little basic roughed out peg tailpiece shape that I like. All right, well, um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that answered your question, Mike. Um, if you want to keep talking about this stuff, keep asking, keep, uh, keep commenting, and uh, I will keep responding. All right, y'all, see you later.